This is the fourth video on lifetimes. So far, the structs we've defined all hold owned types. We can define structs to hold references, but in that case, we need to add a lifetime annotation on every reference in the structs definition. This is important because if a struct holds a reference, that reference must be valid for as long as the struct exists. The lifetime annotation tells Rust exactly how long the reference needs to live. Let's create a struct that holds a string slice. This struct will need a lifetime annotation because it contains a reference. So here we'll create a struct called important excerpt. Right after, we're going to open up a pair of angle brackets and pass in a lifetime annotation. Then inside, we can create the part, and this part will contain a string slice. But of course, we're going to annotate it with a lifetime annotation. So here we can use the ampersand, the apostrophe, and an A, followed by the string. This struct has the single field part that holds a string slice, which is a reference. As with generic data types, we declare the name of the generic lifetime parameter inside angle brackets after the name of the struct so that we can use the lifetime parameter in the body of the struct definition. This annotation means an instance of important excerpt can't outlive the reference it holds in its part field. In other words, the struct must be destroyed before the data it references goes out of scope. Let's see how this works in practice. So in our main function, we're going to create a novel which will equal a string from call me Ismail some years ago. Then we're going to let the first sentence equal novel.split.next, and then we will unwrap it. Below that, we're going to let i equal the important excerpt, and the part is going to contain the first sentence. And finally, we're going to print line that the excerpt is i.part. Both novel and first sentence must live at least as long as i. And now when we run this, what we should get as the first sentence is call me Ismail. Anyway, the data in novel exists before the important except instance is created. In addition, novel doesn't go out of scope until after the important except goes out of scope. So the reference in the important except instance is valid. If we try to create an important except with a reference that goes out of scope before the struct, we'd get a compile error. This is exactly what lifetimes prevent. At this point, you've learned that every reference has a lifetime and that you need to specify lifetime parameters for functions or structs that use references. However, we've already seen functions that compiled without lifetime annotations. Let me show you one. Here we have a function called first word. This function compiles without lifetime annotations, even though both the parameter and return types are references. The reason this function compiles without lifetime annotations is historical. In early versions, this code wouldn't have compiled because every reference needed an explicit lifetime. At that time, the function signature would have been written like this. After writing a lot of Rust code, the Rust team found that Rust programmers were entering the same lifetime annotations over and over in particular situations. These situations were predictable and followed a few deterministic patterns. The developers programmed these patterns into the compiler's code so that the borrow checker could infer the lifetimes in these situations and wouldn't need explicit annotations. As you can see, my code editor shows me these inferred type annotations in gray, or these lifetime annotations in gray. The patterns programmed into Rust's analysis of references are called the lifetime elision rules. These aren't rules for programmers to follow. they are a set of particular cases that the compiler will consider. And if your code fits these cases, you don't need to write the lifetimes explicitly. The elision rules don't provide full inference. If there is still ambiguity about what lifetimes the references have after Rust applies the rules, the compiler won't guess what the lifetime of the remaining references should be. Instead of guessing, the compiler will give you an error that you can resolve by adding the lifetime annotations. Lifetimes on function or method parameters are called input lifetimes and lifetimes on return values are called output lifetimes. The compiler uses three rules to figure out the lifetimes of the references when there aren't explicit annotations. We'll cover these rules in detail in the next episode. But for now, just know that the compiler can often figure out lifetimes automatically for common patterns. Personally, I find lifetime elision really helpful because it means I don't have to write lifetime annotations for every single function. Most of the time, the compiler can figure it out, and when it can't, it will tell me exactly what I need to add. And before we conclude this lesson, let's run the function first word 
So here I'm going to create a text, which will be of type string. And we're going to find out what the first word of that text is by passing in a reference to that text. Then right below, we can print that the first word is the word. And when we run this, we should get hello as an output. 